So an exciting video today. We've got uh, Nomad 1.33 has been released this week and I'm gonna drop in five of the main areas I think you should focus on when you're looking at this new release. Um, it covers off all the new post-processing, the lights, camera additions, um, the ability to save camera positions, uh, a new turntable mode, and then lots of little tweaks like being able to drag your map cap around and the view cube and the ability to four finger tap away your interface. So let's dive right in and have a look at the main reasons to upgrade to Nomad 1.33. So Nomad 1.33 is out. We've got lots to show you in this uh, top five tips for the new release. Uh, one thing I will say is I've spent a few days looking at the release to make sure that um, our course that we released in November is still okay and there's no um, conflicts with the new release. And I'm pleased to say that basically it's really an enhancement to the program. There are no fundamental changes that mean that the course is redundant in any way. What I'm planning on doing next week is putting in a video to the course and that will give you a, a bit of an addendum of all of these new features that I'm going to mention in this video. But please, if you haven't had a look at it, take a look at our course in the description below and that's the teaching you the fundamentals of using nomad and that'll really get you going look at the feedback that we've got on it which is you know it's 46 countries now and the feedback is across the board 100 percent positive so i can only stress that if you know if you're coming to this new then please dive in and take a look at that course and see if that's something that will help you get going with nomad so the big thing in this update really is this panel here. So the post process, um, you can or you can basically turn it on from here. Once you turn it on, you get the ability to use all of these different settings inside here. And this is the literally the, the this is the biggest part of this update. That there's a huge amount of stuff in here. There's some simple little ones like screen space reflections. Um, uh, doesn't really uh, hasn't really helped me a lot yet. I haven't found anything that that, or at least I haven't been able to 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 use it that well. Um, it does enhance them because if you were using Blender, for example, and using screen space reflections, it does give you the 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 fully reflected. If you're using something like Blender Eevee, you you'd notice it straight away. Maybe that's more about me, and maybe it needs a bit more investigation. So I'll I'll look that up a little bit more. This is a great one, ambient occlusion. So we've wanted this for quite some time. So wherever you've got those um, deep hidden shadows, if you look inside there now, um, you can really pump the ambient occlusion. And if anyone doesn't know, or if you're new to this, um, ambient occlusion is, is where in the dark areas that something uh, ca casts over, um, like I can show you here under the crease, where there's a crease or a, a fold or any dark area, then no light can bounce around inside it. And what you get is an, what we call an occluded area. An occlusion just means um, uh, covered by or basically hidden. So if you occlude something, you're hiding it and you're basically hiding it from the light and it stops light bouncing around. So occlusion is something that you, you, know, you, you definitely see in the real world a lot. And this emulates that. So if you look at this, you've got size of occlusion. Um, so this isn't your cast shadow. So look on his shoulder pad where the shadow is. It's not the shadow. It's where it's occluded. And look into the, 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 the deep areas and you'll see the occlusion. It just makes it look much more realistic. The size will be affected. And there's a curvature bias. So depending on how much the model turns. Um, so you could have a play with that. And that would give you some really nice realistic effects. If you're doing things close to the ground, like a car or a vehicle or feet close to the ground, you'll find that your occlusion really matters. So have a play with that one. So we'll go down to the next one, which is probably the one I like the most in this release. So this is depth of field. And, uh, and obviously, I don't think you'd need much explanation in, in what depth of field is. So let's do an extreme example so if we've got we've got far blur, watch the legs at the bottom, um, and as you can see, he's blurring out as we, as we get. Uh, I'll just hide that cylinder actually because I want to really focus on the character. 
you can see um, that will give you a really nice blurred out effect got going towards the feet. And if I change that from reduce the far blur, increase the near blur, then you can move where that where that uh, focal point is really. So um, overuse of this is is quite annoying. You see it, you know, you can over blow this. But if you're doing something that's really pushed in close and you, you want to get a render out of some, or not a render, but a, if you want to show something like that that's got a very, very specific area, it's good to have the foreground blurred and possibly the background blurred. Um, just to highlight the point, like if I want to focus on his belly there, or if I want to focus like halfway down his back, I'd bring the camera right in um, and, and, and change the focal um, change the depth of field there so that, 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 that it matches what, what I'm after. Or you could just blur out the bottom completely um, and just have his shoulders in, in focus. So again, with your, try some of your older models if you're new, you know, if you're, if you're not new to this and if you are new to it, then, then you're lucky. Uh, Bloom, another good one. Uh, something that you'd quite often want to avoid really. But if you're gonna be doing, um, a, a, a lot of things that have a lot of metal with blown out areas uh, it can add a really nice effect to, to, to your to your scene again it's something you might want to avoid um, you know it's not it's not always needed in some of the VR programs that I use like Adobe medium bloom just looks too much it just blows it out too much but if you can be subtle with it and use it certainly when you're doing things like spaceships and you want things, like their light, their engines glow in a little bit, and you don't want to do it in in post processing out of Nomad, then this could be something that that, that you like. Again, personal choice. I'm going to turn it off, so you probably know my personal choice. Um, I'm going to leave that depth of field on actually because I quite like that, and I'll turn the cylinder back on so you can see what I'm doing. In fact, no, I won't. I'll turn the depth of field off while we do the next bit. Um, so the next bit you'll see is, um, again, further post-processing with tone mapping. And you've got very basic um, uh, abilities to, to do things like your exposure, your contrast, the overall scene contrast, and your saturation. So that's really cool. I mean, I love seeing black and whites and monochromatic stuff. So you can see it in the program now. And that in itself, you know, you can oversaturate it if you've got a very stylized look, or you can desaturate it completely like that. So, again, really cool. Uh, chromatic aberration is when, in a camera, you can see there the 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 channels get um, split. So there's like a red line around the arm here, and you've got a um, a green line here. And it's basically an error that would be, you, you want to avoid it when you're using a camera and photographing. But sometimes to make things look realistic, putting chromatic aberration in can be, can be helpful. You can see it really clearly there on around his shoulders and around his, his head. So you'll know when you want that and whether you, whether you need it. You can really push it out like that. Um, and it splits the channels out. The red, green and blue channels are completely split. You can see it at the bottom now. Um, really clearly. Um, in fact, I'll have to put it down at the bottom to really show it. But look how the the the, the red, yellow, and blue are all split out there. Um, and it again, it it makes it look a little bit like the old fashioned three D glasses kind of affair. Uh, um, but it's you know something that you, you you might want to play with. Not for us. Uh, and vignette is quite nice. So that's where you see a, a bloom around the outside. Um, and you can make a nice tight vignette. That's that's probably you know you I can't see a use for that if I'm honest with you the the tight one. Um, but what you might want is something like that, where you just have a you know you've got a highlighted part of your image, and you just want to bring that vignette around. You see it overused on things like Instagram, a lot. So be careful with that. Don't go too cheesy with your stuff. And then the bottom one there, grain. So you can add grain. You can see. Uh, Makes it a bit clearer there. Keep going to the wrong button. Uh, you can see massive amount of grain and then none. So somewhere in between you might want. And then your sharpness. Um, again, be careful with that because look, you can really go way too high on that. Um, you might just want to just put a little tiny bit of that sharpness into your images, possibly. 
Um, I mean, you've got you've got such a lot to play with here now. Um, so as I say, go through your older models, try them first, get some basic models in, just try messing with all of these settings in here until you find what you want. Don't overuse them. Um, you know, things like depth of field can really get a little bit too far sometimes. They're good for little things like that where that arm's just out of focus at the back, but don't go too crazy with it. Um, and see what see what you what you really like out of this this large list of post processing um, updates. So one of my big requests has been lights. Um, let's take a look at the top panel on the left here. Go to the shading panel, and you've got PBR physically based rendering and matcap. And obviously, a lot of this will only be in PBR. If you go to MatCap, your lights is uh, disabled or ignored. So make sure you're in PBR and you see down below there you've got uh, lights and add light. So we add a light and now there's an icon appeared in the screen that you can tap and you get a gizmo around it and you can pick the middle with your uh, Apple Pencil and just move it around and rotate it as you would any other object. What we can also do if you go back, you can change the color. So let's just make it extreme. Put it like a turquoisey color. You can see the shadow there, and you can see it moving around as we as we move the light around. So that's something that we definitely wanted. And then also, if you look over here, you can um, the usual delete and move the layers, but we can duplicate, change the color of that one to an orange. And we'll move that one around. So that's two lights in the scene. And you can see the shadows are really indicating that you've got the two lights um, in there. So plenty to play with with, with, with lights. It's going to make your, rend your not so much your renders, but as you're working, it's going to give you lots of ways to, 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 to test out the look and feel of your models. And it really does help um, just visually enhance what you're, what you're going to make in, in the future. So that's a... A great addition that's one of my favorites in in this release um i haven't found out if there's a limit yet i've been you know i've, I've been adding lights and that that says three there so I'm, I'm assuming that that means with the size of of memory that 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 is that is the the, the limit um so uh, you know three is more than enough for, for most of the things that i would do all of your other um your other PBR stuff is still the same in there. So your exposure of your HDRI, the rotation of your HDRI, um, all pretty much the same. So lighting, definitely one of my, uh, up there in, in one of the most useful additions in, in this release. One thing I did notice is if you use three fingers and rotate, um, that, that would normally rotate the uh, HDRI. So let's just turn the background off and show you what I mean. So as you can see there, I'm rotating the HDRI, but now the lights go with that rotation as well. So that is quite useful. It means that you can plan your scenes out and your lights will um, will be working with your HDRI, which is a really nice feature. So one of the other big ones for me is the addition of added cameras. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So if we take, um, go up to the top menu, and look at camera and the first thing you see now is add view so let's just get some uh, good good views that we want going first of all so we'll go first of all orthographic and we've got down here now you've got the ability you can add um uh, snap to to view down here that that's really useful and that's switched on up here so you've got um quick buttons bottom, you can have voxel remesh, wireframe, camera reset, camera snap, um, and a lot of them are as they've always been. But having that at the bottom means you can set your camera from here, like so, when we've, and we've just said it, we'll have orthographic and we'll have snap to the front like that, and then we'll go back to camera and add the view. And you can name it there if you, if, if you want to, just by clicking the, the pen icon. And you could call it um, front. I won't do it for the rest of them to save time. But obviously you, that just shows you can do it. So that's useful. Go to the side. Snap it. And go back to camera. Add a view. Go to the back. 
snap it. I'm using the buttons at the bottom, as you can see. Um, out of view. Now, the interesting thing is now is go to perspective and you can even mess with the field of view so it gets extreme. And now you can add cameras and do another one. I'll do it right the way zoomed in. Looking from the bottom like so. Add a view. And now, if you flip through all of those camera views, you can quickly go through all of your preset views. So you could easily build yourself a default scene with front, back, side, the usual orthographic planes that you would see in programs like Maya and Cinema 4D and Blender, etc. Um, and, and you can also now change between your um, orthographics orthographic views and your perspective views with preset cameras um, so I find that really, really really useful and the fact that it remembers whether it's perspective or orthographic is just brilliant just makes it even easier so we'll leave all them set on for now so uh, Stefan uh, the developer added a, a lovely little feature it's only a tiny one but I actually really like it um, it's not fully featured yet I'll show you what it is so if you click on the top right of the interface and you've got the Nomad logo, in there you've got turntable and turntable speed. So you can turn that speed right down and then click turntable on and then you've got a turntable of your character, um, which it can't be exported yet. Um, what you could do now is record the screen and use it that way. But it's a great way for you to show off your work. So in, the, in our forums, I'd expect to see loads of your models now done as little turntables like this uh, and obviously you can um, I did it incredibly slow there so you can do a, you know much much faster um, speed like that uh, but it's a great way to show off your work you know without having to send it to Sketchfab or anywhere anything like that so it's um, uh, and it is working with the depth of field there you can see the back of the arm coming in and out so you will be able to present your work quite well straight out of the iPad if you screen record it. Again, it's not exportable yet. Uh, I assume that's on his list to do, but it's it's you know, it's there for us to use as and when uh, uh, as and when you need it. Now, one little addition that I personally will use quite a lot is the ability to rotate the map cap. So what does that mean? Um, so at the minute, most of this video we've focused on physically based rendering things, so PBR and if you hold three fingers on the screen and rotate around, I've already covered this bit, but you're basically rotating the HDRI, the, the image in the background, and you're rotating your lights in the scene. So that's pretty useful. But what we didn't have is the ability to do anything with our mat caps. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, a mat cap is basically a way to light a scene. Um, we don't want to even bring a new one in, so we'll just use the ones we've got. You can light a scene with an image. So these little uh, spheres on the bottom left now, these are all mat caps, and they're basically an image that's driving the look of the, of, of the lighting. So if I do this one, the black with the white outline, that would be what would be stuck with. You could move your model around, you can see. It's how we, how we mostly sculpt in most programs is, is a mat cap. Um, but what we have got now in here is the ability to, if we go back to the top of the shading, we can, so clearly we're on matte cap, and if we do a three-fingered push on the screen now and rotate around, you can see that the matte cap itself is rotating. So that isn't the world, that's the material rotating um, the, 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 the matte cap. So that, for me, is quite useful because we you could just put a clay on like that and now you can spin that around and have a look. And what the reason that is useful is when you're sculpting, if you want to check your form, um, normally what we'd have to do is rotate the model around all the time, and or even rot physically rotate it with a with the gizmo like that. Um, but now we can rotate the lighting and see if you're getting your silhouette right and your form right. So for me, even though that's a small update for me, uh, I found that useful um, and. I'm pretty sure that it's. I don't think there was any. That I don't think that was in there at all in the previous version, um. But without checking, I don't know. So have a go at that and see with your own map caps, um, and see how it goes. Now, just just to say, this is an iPad twenty twenty. This is a brand spanking new iPad for me. I've just upgraded to the new one with six gig of RAM. 
uh, and this is literally liquid gold so nomad runs like a dream on it i've had really high millions of polygons already um that's 1.78 million i can subdivide easily you know e each of the models could be upwards of, you know i mean that's now 7.13 million vertices there um and it's not batting an eye and it and it doesn't bat an eye I, i'm really impressed with the new chip um and the way that the graphics cards uh working inside the the ipad so just to say i've now moved i'm going, i'm going to keep the 2018 ipad that i recorded all the courses on um, so I can always check uh, on a new one and the old one. But I'm very, very impressed with both Nomad and with the iPad 2020. There are, of course, lots of um, smaller updates. One would be tiny little things, but really useful is four finger tap. Gets you a clear interface like that. So four finger tap again and it's back. Little things like that are good to know because it just helps you to uh, you know to sculpt cleanly if you're just sculpting and you've got the brush that you're used to then just four finger tap and you're just sculpting on it on a clean interface yeah you've got a view cube up here now which is just a little bit cleaner and a little bit better so you can just spin around and it's very very normal in in, in a lot of 3d programs but it's just a little bit better than, than it than it was there um and also there, there are lots of tiny little uh, interface tweaks um, that you, you, if you're new to this it won't mean anything to you but it's just cleaning up the interface for me a little bit and I found that I found that so you know there's all sorts of little if you read the, the the brief that the developer put out you can see that there's lots of little tweaks in there that have made it a, an even more powerful program so I hope you're liking these videos. Please consider giving it a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other artists and share our work. If you do like it and you want to subscribe, then hit that notification bell and make sure you hit all so you'll get a notification every time we drop a new video, which is every Wednesday and every Friday. Have a great week and enjoy Nomad 1.33.